white man in boxing. Where the flare cops. Shout out to Goodfellas Sports TV. Woo! Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bad bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellas1Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellas since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man, we back. Goodfellas Sports TV. They got rumors going around that Andy Ruiz. Somebody got a ticket on their car. It's the first time I've seen that in the hood over here. But uh, Andy Ruiz could be fighting Luis Ortiz, right? Um, in the comeback fight, I'm not sure uh, how true or how factual those rumors are. I asked some people still waiting to get a return. Obviously, it's Saturday. People out with their families and enjoying Valentine's Day weekend. But uh, I may have to do a follow-up. Or I may just sit on Twitter what I heard and what I didn't hear. So... Make sure you follow me on Twitter. I'm most active on Twitter, um, I believe now. So Twitter link in the description, Facebook, Instagram link in the description. Y'all know what this is. Goodfella Sports TV. Uh, appreciate the love, support, your boy CJ Goodfella. Shout out to all the, the real channels grinding, man. But um, to me, to me, I think Andrew Weiss probably would have made more money fighting Dillian White. And that's my personal opinion on that one. Uh -uh. I know the zone is paying their fighters a lot of money. All right. And I make a two part video. I'll talk about what Jamal, Jamal Charlo said too. I, I just drive and just think I might as well just combine the video. All right. So, with that being said, I just feel like he could have made more money fighting Dillian White and got more clout. You know, once again, what do you get for beating Luis Ortiz? You get absolutely nothing. You beat Dillian White. You get a WBC interim title. You know, y'all smell me? So, like I said before, this is one time Al Heyman again, and I'll talk about Al Heyman when I get to Jamal. One time again where Al Heyman is just trying to make the in-house fights. He not doing what's best for the fighter. And I feel that Dillian White, you know, he, he might be a harder fight if you have to go to the UK. But they said they was willing to put the Dillian White fight in America. You know what I'm saying? And I understand Al don't want to make Andy Ruiz an unofficial member of Matchroom or the zone in or the zone. I get it from a business aspect. But like I said, how much money is it in fighting Luis Ortiz? Ain't no money in it. Ain't nothing in beating Luis Ortiz. It's nothing but danger beating Luis Ortiz. Ortiz just got knocked the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Why can you beat Ortiz? The way, in the way he ain't already been beat. You know what I'm saying? You probably can point decision him. I mean, I guess, but what do that get you? A water knock him out. Andrew Weez did. It don't get you a mandatory shot. You know? It don't get you an interim title. Beating Dillian White, get those things. And you could have drug Dillian White to America. Just let that marinate for a minute. You know when United Kingdoms come abroad, fighters come abroad, they, you, most of the times they're not the same They not the same as they are in the United, United Kingdom. Now, could Andy Weez have some concern the fight might fall off because Dillian White might get popped like Billy Joe when he came over? Blah, say blah. Yeah, you put that in a contract that if he do fall out, he still got to pay you an X amount of money for wasting your time. That's how you do that. All right? But once again, Al Heyman ain't doing what's best for the gander. He doing what's best for him. People tell me Al Heyman is for the fighter. No, Al Heyman doing what's best for his pockets first. You know what I'm saying? He don't give a hell about the fight fans. If you speak to everybody, if you speak to everybody through him, through his company, I ain't going to say everybody, but most of them don't care about the fight fans. You beating Ortiz coming off a loss instead of beating the hell out of Dillian White and becoming water mandatory. Makes no sense. It, it, it just makes no logical. You probably going to make less money fighting Ortiz. Now, could it be a rumor he could take a tuna? Hey, I get it. If he come back and he take a, a can of tuna fish, he said, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to tune up, man. I'm going to tune up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tune up a little bit. Then I come back and I'll and I take a big fight. I get it. But if you're going to you just skinny dip and just jump in the, the pool ass naked and just get it in, hey, man, you might as well, shit, you might as well get it in with the most money in a fight you get, you gain the most in, that's Dillian White. You beat Dillian White, that can line you up for a Wilder fight, that can line you up for AJ a Trilogy. It just don't make no sense. Andrew Weeze the one that ran from that fight. Now, I understand saying that, you know, I'm not training, I'm not in shape, I can't make that fight date. Now, if we can push the fight bait back, I do it. I understand him saying that. If you come out, that's what. But you, you gonna, you gonna break in a new trainer and fight Luis Ortiz. You lose that fight. It's over. If that fight is close, it's over. 
You know what I'm saying? To me, that 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 fight, it just don't make zero sense. Me personally, that fight don't make zero sense. De Niro, Zanero, De Niro, no sense. But this is what they talking about. You know, this is what PBC do. Now they doing what Top Rank did many, many moons ago. Number in-house fights, and that's why Top Rank got pushed off of top, uh, off of HBO. You know, but as far as the fight going, as far as schematics, um, you don't know what, what, what type of coach Andy Reid's gonna get. If he get Teddy Adams, I tell you, I speak to AB Boxing News, man. Love AB Boxing News channel, man. He, he get it together. He gets you the right questions you need to know and everything, bro. You know, he asks good questions. He probably, he probably one of the better interview channels out there. But um, shout out to him, man. I got no, I love my brown brothers out there, man, working hard. But uh, but looking at Luis or looking at that fight, depending on Andy Ruiz coming shape and and what Ortiz got left, it's a good fight. You know, I would prefer to see the Dillian White fight. Uh, I think it mean more, and I would love to see Dillian White shut up. But the positive thing about it is, you know, Wilder still gonna shut that ass up regardless if they fight. So he gotta get past Tyson Fury. Um, and I haven't done no film study yesterday. I was getting ready to go out, uh, and I was, the fight was on. So then we, I, the place I went to, they were showing the fight on the uh, TV screen. So, you know, I, I had to watch the fight, um, again, you know, I'm going to have to give an, it might not be my most accurate analyst. Cause I just, I don't really care about the fight. I mean, I just don't, not like that. It's, it's not getting me amped up, but you know, come fight week, hopefully I get that, I get that feeling. You know what I'm saying? My James Brown voice. But, you know, continue to look at it. That's a that's a, that's a dangerous fight for nothing to be on the line. So maybe the winner fight, Konowski, if he get past, you know, whoever the hell he fight in early March. Um, but, you know, Ruiz hand speed, it'd be a good fight. It definitely would be. I don't know who I would favor, uh, but it's crazy, man. But hold on. All right, the start and stop. Had to get out for a minute, but yeah. About Ruiz and, and Ortiz, you really can't call it either way. Um, depends on what type of preparation Andrew Ruiz are going to put in, the report he's going to have with his new coach, and also, um, you know, what Ortiz got left in the tank. I've never been high on Ortiz uh, multiple times, been, been caught by uh, for pits, and you know what I'm saying? Um, he only throw one or two shots at a time. You're lucky to get three shots out of him at once, so... Um, depending on what Weez do, Ruiz can utilize the ring and walk Ortiz into shots. You know, Ruiz at his best and Ortiz at his best. I'm taking Andrew Ruiz. It's never just been that high on Luis Ortiz. Ortiz is, was never that good to me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's just my personal opinion. But to talk about Jamal, uh, Jamal rebuttaled, uh, responded to the rumors about Eddie Hearn. I put uh, I put that in the description. He went on Sirius XM. They doing some boxing on there. Uh, they've been doing some really good interviews, and he trying to scare the interview off and get all angry and upset and erratic in his tone. And that's how you know. When somebody lying or somebody uncomfortable about a question, and I feel what a lot of PBC fighters were, or, or fighters in general are uncomfortable with is that, you know, at one point, fighters used to dictate and control their destiny of boxing more than they do now. Now you got a whole bunch of white-collar dudes that, that carry computers and briefcases dictating um, you know, their career, and they don't have a say-so. And I read the Al Heyman, look, part of his contract with Heyman Sports is that fighters can no longer, fighters can't do shit without Al Heyman giving them a permission slip and signing off for it. So he went on there, and they asked him about Eddie Hart. He said he forwarded it to Al Heyman, and Al Heyman, his people say the offer was weak. Now, can we say, the, uh, all right, let's say I know for a fact that it came from that side of the street, his side of the street, that he was offered seven, then ten million. Eddie didn't say that the second offer was ten million, but I've been saying that. I've been heard it was ten million. All right. Now could the offer be weak as far as uh, you know options and maybe Eddie Hearn is saying it's a one fight deal, but I got the right to match any option after that. Rematch clauses, you know what I'm saying? Uh, venue, or we get to determine the venue and the fight, and then it could be a weak. Uh, it could be a weak. Uh, it could be a weak offer from that aspect. Some of the finer details. See, Eddie can say it's a one fight, a fight contract, but then it has stipulations in there. A fight. All right, we get options on your next fight. We already know it's hard 
in this game to get somebody to cross the street, right? With no, with no, with no attachments. You know, with no loose, no attachments as far as oh, we can match your next offer for your next fight. No, I, I probably believe if he's saying it's a weak offer and he mean it from his heart, and that's what they're telling him. There's probably some stipulations in there where Eddie Hearn can still control his career with options by matching whatever offer he gets. So, um, from that aspect, it, it truly, I'm not saying I know any special inf inside information, but it truly may not be a one fight offer. It may be all oh, you have to rematch Demetrius Zandra, or right? you get no say so. Uh, we get all the rights and all this that it could be a lot of small stuff in there where Al Heyman looked at the contract and say, "Oh no, we're not doing this," you know. So I'm gonna say that first. But he said the offer was weak, and um, take his word on it. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we we just want to see him get in the ring. But with the best, but if you go back, you look at Ronnie Shields. In his interview said they have no interest in it. Uh, you see, when they was in the WBC convention, the convention. You know, uh, dude on Earth, Earth Rodriguez on Twitter told me, he said, yeah, I've been saying that, man, about, you late about, about the WBC adventure when he was, he don't want to fight Demetrius Andre. When he was with Ness, and Ness was asking him, he's like, I don't want to fight him. And see, at the end of the day, you know, when you do those interviews and you say that out there, he's been, he said it multiple times about not fighting Demetrius Andre. This is why fans question him. You know, this is why they get all upset and erratic and they angry. And, and you know, only people that's uncomfortable in a situation get tensed or or angry people that that's calm and like yeah man I, I didn't really receive the offer or the offer just wasn't what we was looking for right now you know some things got to be tweaked they send down they, they bump their heads to see what can happen we'll see what happens see people that interview like that usually telling the truth you know people that 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 that's all twitchy and they, they <laughs> like them and they all erratic about and angry and they irritated like they nature probably is to fight the best but they can't control their career so now they got to be the ones making the excuses up because Al Heyman don't do no talking. They the ones that got to, you know, say this, that, and the third. And with social media, everybody hanging on every single word you say. And people reposting the interviews with your coach saying what you saying. And you really think you can fight them. We want to fight Demetrius Andrade. Then things change and they say, oh, no, we're not doing that right now. Then who that fall on? That fall on Jamal and Jamil with Jamal and Jamil. Because they both wanted the same. So I get it. He probably would cross the street to fight me beat the hell out of him and come back but he's not allowed to and this is the reason this is part of giving up your power and people say well everybody in boxing you know power some people got more control than others some people don't got no control you know and, and, and that's the sad truth about the situation man but he went on to say that the offer was too weak and this and that and he won't Canelo but like I said before he didn't address turning down the Can his team turning down the Canelo offer now, one thing I don't know about the Canelo offer, the one thing I don't know about it is if he, you know, he turned it down. Because even when he said Demetrius Andrade, he said he didn't turn that down. He said his people said it was too weak. Now, in the email, did they get into the finer tune things of, of, of how, you know, the finer tune points? Probably not. It's just like Peter Quillen losing his belt. People forget about that. Al Heyman paid him a, a alleged sum of five hundred thousand to drop his WBL belt. Tell me who doing that in boxing? Who? Who in the history of boxing got paid to drop their belt from their manager or their advisor? Come on, man! You can't argue this stuff, man. You can't. You can't argue. And this is this is this is the truth. Who doing that? You know, made Deontay Wilder turn on one hundred twenty million, and, and they having financial troubles. You know, you got to scrape up money to give it to give the twenty million of water to match the zone. The zone set the market for water. They don't. The other the other people don't talk about that. Swirl Patrol don't talk about that. Without the if the zone offered didn't offer water twenty million, you think Showtime and PBC would scrape up twenty million for water? No. Nah. What Jay Z say? Players going broke. Niggas going broke trying to keep up with me. <laughs> That's how Heyman trying to keep up with the, with the zone the top rank and whoever else. That's matching his fighters, you know what I'm saying? He trying to keep up with them. He trying to keep up with the Joneses, and he can't. Financially, he can't keep up with these dudes, man. And right now, his only his only reason why his, his fighter's not going nowhere, the reason why Eddie can't snatch his fighters is because he got to sign off on it. Now, he did sign off on David Benavidez going to top rank, though, but he had to send him back because the promotional deal with Samson Boxing wasn't, was, was still valid. People don't talk about that. He ain't let certain. He ain't let no nigga go nowhere. I tell you that right now. He ain't let no brother go nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Al, you sit your ass on the pine. 
So if he like I heard from PBC side of the street, I leave it at that that he that was the offer was ten to fight Andre, it was fifteen to fight Canelo, and it was a and they wanted a dub to fight Canelo. So he didn't address the Canelo situation in that sound clip. We we want Canelo. That ship sailed. You didn't hear what Oscar said. It's over with. They said Canelo may not come back down to 160 pounds. So he must not be aware his team turned down 15 million. Now I heard that it might be a chance he wasn't aware of that one. Of those negotiations. So somebody holding it up for, on his end. But even if he wanted to take it, he couldn't take it. That's the difference between 33% and 15 or 10% out him and take. You giving up 15%, at least 15, 18%. Maybe you giving up twenty three percent at the at the most according to the contract I seen or the lawsuit. You giving up twenty three percent, and you putting that in your pocket. But also you giving up a hundred percent of of ownership, a hundred percent of what you want to do or creativity. It's kind of like a record deal. You know, when you was an independent artist, you can put out as much out music as you want to put on the piff, and you can tour and hit clubs and get show money. When you under the label, the label the label stops you from putting out uh, albums or may shelf you. For whatever reason it may be. Same thing with Al Heyman. You take the quick, you 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 get in the 23 or 20, 18 percent back in your pocket, but you also giving up creative control about who you want to fight. So in, of your career. So you can't make any boxing decision. Even if you know somebody said, I got a billion dollar five fight deal for you. If Al Heyman don't sign off on it, then you can't do it. So it's I think it's frustrating for a lot of fighters knowing they can't do what they want to do, even on their side of the street. You know, Arrow could be like, I want to fight Sean, I want to fight Sean, I want to fight Sean. Al was probably like, uh, it'll happen. You can't do it right now. We we working some things out. We do we do it when we can, we want to do. So you can say that to you blue in your face, but they all got plans for him and Al gotta sign off for it to happen. So like I said with Jamal Charlo, you know, he turned down seven, ten million dollars. Okay. The offer was weak, we move on. You know, I'm 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 very, very interested to know if he get into the fine tuner points rematch clauses in that little email they sent. But, you know, if that's the case, that's the case. We move on from it. You know, I'm not giving the Char the Charlatan twins no more no more no more publicity, bro. You know, they don't want to fight nobody. They want to go rogue. They do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? But the day they the day they lose, I'll be happy. Real talk, but hey, it's good fella sports TV. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you got business questions, cry response, your video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Wanna make a donation to the channel, that link's in the description. That's what they donate to share, share the video. Much love and support. And, um, yeah, man, I don't, people say, you hate Texas. No, I don't hate Texas. Love Texas. Love my brothers in Houston, Fort Worth, Dallas. One of my college roommates was uh, from El Paso. Love Austin. You know what I'm saying? Love whole Texas, man. Um, just them three dudes are suspect, bro. The, Char the Charlatan Twins and Earl Spence. Everybody else, Foreman, Terry Norris, loved them. Juan Diaz. Love what he brought to the table as a fighter. You know, you keep going on and on about the great state of Texas and the great fighters they got, you know, and the great fights they had there, Pinnell and, and um, 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 Chavez and just, you know, the baby bull fights he had there. You know, they had really, really good fights there. So shout out to the great state of Texas. Um, them Charlatan Twins and Spence, I don't care for them, but I respect them as fighters and they are solid fighters, you know, at bare minimum. And I don't like the Cowboys. But other than that, I like the Texans. I like the Mavericks. You know what I'm saying? I got a Mavericks jersey. You know what I'm saying? I like Houston, Texans, man. Just like when they was the Oilers. But you know what it is what it is, man. Don't buy into the hype. Be gone.